Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to everyone who has joined the webinar. This is our second webinar in a series of webinars, and today's webinar is focused on the MBA admissions in the United States. Again, my name is Ajay Singh, and I'm the CEO student. Welcome to everyone who has joined the webinar from all over the world. I'm very privileged to introduce Manoj Mittal today for this webinar, who is going to be the sp invited speaker and host. Manoj graduated from Harvard Business School with his MBA a few years back, and he also was, was successful in admitting to a number of other top colleges here in US. Now Manoj is a very senior executive with one of the global companies here in the United States, and spends his time mentoring, guiding number of students who are interested in applying for MBA and also mentoring them post MBA once they get into the uh, professional world. So again, Manoj, thanks for taking time to come and speak uh, on our behalf and welcome. And with this, I'm going to hand it over to you. Thanks. Thanks for all your help. Ajay, thanks for the kind introduction. Um, and everyone else, welcome to the webinar. Uh, just a quick few logistical items. Uh, this is a one-way webinar only. Uh, participants have been muted and will not be able to reach us using audio. So if you have a question, please send us via the chat box, uh, which should be to your right. It's a little widget. If you're having trouble with the audio, please dial in using the telephone number in your email registration. So without further ado, let's begin. What I wanted to do was basically cover four areas today. Why an MBA? Uh, and this is a really important question to ask before you embark upon your journey. Then what colleges to choose from? Again, an equally important question. And then kind of get into what are the important elements um, of an application. And lastly, quickly talk about the application process. So why an MBA? I think this is the quintessential question. For most of us, the idea of doing an MBA suddenly descends upon us and we hurriedly go about trying to figure out what to do. There are some um, you know, who have a deliberate plan. Whatever the case may be, um, it's very important to take a step back and ask yourself, why an MBA? Responses like, eh, I'm tired of what I'm doing. I just want to run off my skills. I've been running with my blinders on. I want to increase my network. They are okay, but not good enough. And I can guarantee you that after a little bit of soul searching and introspection, <clears throat> you will find that there is a reason which sits on a higher ground. There is a more fundamental reason. So things like, you know, um, I'm tired of what I'm doing, and I would really like to get into marketing. Or, you know, I love numbers. I want to get into finance. I'm tired of being an individual contributor and would like to learn how to influence a group of people. I want to lead. I want to manage. You know, these are all good, legitimate reasons for pursuing an MBA. The soul searching is really important because you want to identify the right schools, the right universities you want to apply to. There are many good universities worldwide. There are over 10,000 MBA programs in the world. Uh, according to GMAC, the Graduate uh, Management Admission Council, there are more than 5,900 programs across 1,600 universities across 82 countries that ex um, accept the GMAT as part of the selection criteria. You know, keep in mind that some programs um, accept alternate tests as well. Regardless, the fact of the matter is that most international students want to come to the U.S. for an MBA. Uh, there was a U.S. news article um, which said, which pegged that number at more than 50%. So, which brings us to the next topic, what colleges? Uh, listen, you know, we will not be bashful about the fact that we do have a bias, you know, for good schools, uh, good MBA schools. The brand does matter, and I repeat, the brand does matter. The associations which you make um, in these top schools are really important. For instance, you know, most of the friends, you know, Ajay and I have, have already reached the pinnacle of the careers, you know, being managing directors, senior vice presidents, CEOs, successful entrepreneurs. I mean, no one can argue that's not a good network. But this does not mean that the other colleges are not good. It's all about um, what you're looking for and what is important to you. 
if you want to focus on finance, for example, right? So we all know Wharton, Booth, the University of Chicago, they're all um, top-notch schools in finance. But then you have um, Stern, Carnegie Mellon, UT Austin, they're good as well. I would strongly urge you to do your research. There are enough resources on the internet out there and make sure that uh, your choices of schools is aligned with your interests. You know, if you want to do a part-time MBA or continue in the same job, it's okay to look at second um, and third tier B schools. Uh, you know, you, you don't even have to come to the U.S. in that case, I would argue. I'm sure there are local schools you know, which can fulfill your need um, in most cases. Um, but you get the point. I can't emphasize the last two points enough, why an MBA and what college. A target goal will lend itself to a successful MBA application. We are not saying, you know, that you have to have every detail planned, but having a solid idea of where you want to be will, will really help. So at this point, I want to do a quick poll. <clears throat> So you should see a screen pop up on your on your computer. Um, uh, uh, take 60 seconds to answer this question, and then we can move on. Fantastic! Sounds like almost all of you are done. You guys did it in record time, you know. And the numbers are showing that most of you have three to five years of experience. That's really good. Okay, let's move on. Um, so the next um, thing, uh, the next thing I want to talk about is the elements of the application. So the first thing is scores, right? And the very first thing I want to say here is don't worry about your undergrad GPA. I say this more because um, it's a thing of the past and you can't do much about it. Plus, since it's a thing of the past and I'm hoping it's three to five years um, old, it really wouldn't factor as much in the application process, you know, application evaluation. What you should um, focus on more is what you have control over now. As far as scores are concerned, I would say that GMAT plays an important role. There are other elements as well, but let's focus on GMAT for a second. GMAT is one of the most important elements of your application. A low GMAT score could likely el eliminate you from the running, and a high GMAT score does not guarantee admission. So let's kind of dissect, parse that a little bit more. Low score, so what do we mean by that, right? So if you have, um, if you are 30 to 40 points below the target score, and the target score being defined as um, you know, the mean, median, midpoint of the score of the accepted students at the university you're targeting, then that's a low score. It just puts a lot of burden on the remaining part of your application. High score, you know, let's face it, you know, the application pool is very competitive. There is no dearth of smart people. And with all the test prep centers, you know, the scores are inching higher every day. If you have a 750 plus, then I, I can guarantee there are a lot of people with that score. But one thing we can say for sure is that if you have a good score, your application will, will deserve a serious look, you know. In other words, you know, getting a good GMAT score is a necessary condition, but not a sufficient one. Um, there, was, there was a quote from Dean of uh, Admissions at UC Berkeley. <clears throat> this was a long time ago, but I think the, uh, the message still holds true that they had, at one point, they had 200 applicants you know, with over 750 GMAT score, and they rejected 75% of those, you know, mostly because they were not accomplished in any other way, you know. You have to have good scores, but in addition, you need to have other elements of your application that differentiate you. Sometimes this issue is a bit accentuated in the case of international students because there tends to be flocking. Not a problem with the international students per se, but uh, a result of the limited career paths in some countries. So picking up the threads from there, if there are 100 applicants um, who have the same background, right, let's say an engineering degree, and they have worked in a tech R&D environment for three to five years, excellent GMAT scores, then you can only imagine how hard of a task it becomes for an admissions officer. He can't admit all the 100 applicants because schools are looking to get a diverse body of students as well. 
in reality, this is exactly what happens. You know, for example, applicants from India pretty much tend to have the same background. You're all smart. You have nailed the GMAT. You have your engineering degrees, and then you have your tech careers and all. Think about how you can differentiate yourself. You know, some thoughts, and these are applicable across different industries, retail, nonprofit, consulting. Have you done a project lead role, or can you do one now? Uh, to demonstrate your leadership skills, qualities. Have you taken challenging projects? You know, have you succeeded? Have you failed? What were the lessons learned from uh, from that that have pushed you into thinking about an MBA? Uh, well, perhaps you were different, and you had a really high impact role. You know, like working on a product that changed the growth profile of a company. I mean, these are all good ways to differentiate yourself. You know, the other thing I would say is that if you have less than three years of experience, then that will not work in your favor. Uh, if you're applying to the U.S. colleges. U.S. colleges typically look for three to five years of experience, uh, three to five years of quality experience, and even if you get in with the with with low experience, you will feel out of place in the U.S. schools because most of your class, classmates will have more experience. You know. There are also situations uh, with some international students uh, where they have already done an MBA from their home countries and then they decide to do a second one here in the U.S. That's okay, and I guess there are some valid reasons for this action, but I often question why. You know, if you had thought through that initial question of why an MBA and what are your goals, perhaps you know you we wouldn't have you wouldn't have had to do two MBAs. You know, in fact, I think actually uh, some of the schools here in the U.S. don't even um, wouldn't even allow you to do two MBAs. Okay, um, I'm gonna launch a quick poll again. Take some time, 60 seconds to answer the question. Sounds like uh, it's pretty evenly split. Now, most of you are, I think, you know, between uh, two and three years out. Good. I think you guys are thinking ahead. That's a great thing. Move on. So essays. This is the next important thing. This is your chance to show the admissions officer who you are. It's all about you. Don't be afraid to toot your own horn. And one thing you know which I learned was you know that uh, you know the the U.S. loves active voice. You know. I know that in some international countries, students have a tendency to use passive voice. Use active voice in your in your essays. You know, try not to repeat. You know what's been already said in the application. Um, give anecdotes um, that might give the reader an insight into what your leadership style is. Don't be afraid to talk about your weaknesses and what you're doing to overcome them. What is it that makes you tick? Cite some specific examples. The admissions officer. Um, uh, would like to know the person they are looking to admit in the school. They are looking for evidence that um, you will be a good fit for the school. The basic tenet in writing an essay is that this is a piece of work that can be written by you and no one else. Do not copy ideas. Trust me, you know the the, the reader will see th see through that clearly. Don't copy essays. You know this is a sure kiss of death. I mean, essay writing is an iterative process. It takes time. Do not expect that it'll be done in, in in a day or two. Start when you have some free time, like the summer holidays or a long weekend. Jot down ideas. Think, think what happened, what influenced you, what changed you, what inspired you. One of the counselors on um, www.student.com has written a three-part blog on essay writing. Although it is a um, it is for undergraduates, but I think the fundamental way one goes about framing and writing does not change. So please take a look. Um, www.student.com. Student is S T O O D N T, and then go to the block section. Okay. So leadership. That's something you know which which the business schools are looking for. So and it can mean actually different things to different people, as you probably know or will learn when you go to business school. You know it comes in leadership comes in various forms. Business schools are looking to create the next generation leaders. They want to enhance and hone your leadership skills. They want to see true leaders emerge from the program. 
and don't get me wrong, you know, even if you, speci you want, uh, if you want to specialize in finance or marketing or any other area, the expectation is that you lead, that you be in charge, that you influence things, you know. So to that extent, if you can prove that you have some leadership experience or that is that there is a, that trace of that future leader in you, then that's really good. And you can you can get this kind of experience at work, you know, at your work. Some examples again: lead a small project from inception to completion, create a project plan, define goals, milestones, conduct meetings, or you know, lead a cross-functional team, you know, where you bring together various function, exercise influence over people um, from other functions who you do not know. Great thing. Or simply become a manager of a group. You can um, you can. Um, uh, get some leadership experience outside of work as well, right? So be a be a creative person, start a new volunteering project, get other people excited, motivated, and involved in your thinking. That's leadership too. Or have a side venture. If you're already working, so I want to caution you of conflict of interest, but many people have side activities and hobbies that are per permissible. You know, for, for example, you, you run an alumni organization for for your undergrad school, you know, and, and you are doing some good, uh, leadership work over there. The point of all this being is that you want to get some insights as to what your leadership style is. You know, are you a visionary? You know, are you a basic a ringmaster, an orchestrator? Do you lead by example or something else? You know. And then lastly, if you have great communication skills, then that that is icing on the cake. All good leaders know one thing: they know how to communicate. They know how to reach their audience and what is the important message to deliver. Okay. <clears throat> Recommendations. This is a bit of a blind spot, right? Uh, a black hole because you do not know. Um, you don't know. You don't get to see what's being written for you. But actually, you can you can do certain things to to prepare for it. So very quickly, you know, what makes a good letter of reference? The first thing is it's fact-based, you know. When someone praises you, instead of saying that, you know, John is a great analytical person, a specific example would help and strengthen your case. Um, for example, John's analytical skills are excellent. The team was stuck between um, launch of two initiatives. John went out of his way to seek information from different functions and came up with a compelling ROI analysis, making it easy for the management to prioritize. That's beautiful, right? It, it kind of you know gives you insights into John. And the second thing is the title of the person doesn't matter. What matters is who knows you, someone who has been your direct supervisor. Now, if this person happens to be um, an alumnus of the B school which you're applying to, then that's great. But otherwise, don't worry about it. Uh, do not worry about getting a recommendation for, from a CEO or SVP from your company who just knows you on a high buy basis. You know. Then finally, the this is an important point. You know, the message that the reader is getting should be consistent. The spirit being that it is painting a picture of you along with the other parts of the application. For example, you know, if you in one of your essays said, hey, that you have good communication skills. And one of the recommenders say, hmm, John could work on his communication skills, then that would leave the reader a bit puzzled, you know. Now, I did say fact-based uh, and consistent, but since you don't have any control over it, what can you do? So there's something you can do. You can plan. So along with your request for recommendation, and um, when you reach out to the recommender, show your application, show your essays. Show the application form. You should highlight the few examples or the few incidents that you want this person to highlight, and that should do it. I also uh, quickly want to say a few words about ghostwriting. Most people are so busy that they will say, "Hey, John, uh, why don't you write it yourself, and I'll sign it for you." You know, I think that is borderline unethical. Not not only is it borderline unethical, it is you know if you think about it, if it's very hard to write your own recommendation you know it is very hard to write your own phrase and 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 project that it is someone else's opinion uh, it might be okay to uh, um, uh, have a draft uh, written and then submit to the recommender who in uh, turn can reword the draft into his or her, her own words you know that's okay okay so we are at the last uh, slide, the application process. As you can tell from what I've said so far, 
applying to business schools is a process and this process could take anywhere from 6 to 18 months depending on your level of preparedness. Um, test preparation can take 3 to 6 months. Um, if you want to set yourself apart uh, with some leadership experience then that at least uh, that could take another 12 months. Uh, you'll need to submit your application package about six months before you before you start your studies you know so so it's never too early to start. MBA is an investment it's a significant investment. The preparation for a successful application um, requires time and money. The good news is that investing in this preparation may have a good return, may have a high return with admission to the best schools of your choice and then even maybe even a scholarship and all. One thing um, which um, I want to emphasize on networking while you're applying, uh, while you're in the process of applying to B schools and this is something uh, as an international student I have observed you know, people don't do. Do not forget to reach out to the alums that you know. Contact the admissions office and get a list of the alums in your area. Talk to them get their viewpoints. Uh, there is no better source of information than a friend who has been to that university in which you are targeting. Use LinkedIn to establish connections. That will show up and schools will like the fact you know that you have been doing your due diligence and, and taking the effort. You know. So that's all I have to say. Um, good luck with your application process. Um, before we take questions from you, um, I, just want to ha I just have one more poll question for you. So let me launch that. <clears throat> Give you about fifteen more seconds here. Okay, thank you. Why don't we move over to the questions? Let's see, what are the questions coming in? Just give me five seconds here. <coughs> So somebody is asking um, how important is the interview process? Um, I would say it's part of the application process. You know, most B schools only invite a select group of candidates for the interview process. If you get invited for an interview, then um, you have made it really further into the process, and typically your chances, you know, go up from like one in ten to one in two. Uh, the interviews are conducted by uh, by an alumnus or a member of the MBA admission staff, about thirty minutes long, typically. Um, the idea is to get to know you in the context of a conversation. You know, for instance, you know, hey, you know, at least you know, in the in my case, this is what the interview asked me. You know, hey, uh, you are here at point A. You want to get to point B. You know, how does you know you, you, the Harvard Business School how will it play a role here? You know, so things like that. Some schools, you know, after the interview, uh, will also ask you to reflect on the interview. So just keep that in mind. Okay, more questions. Um, is TOEFL needed? Um, some business schools require uh, and some don't. Uh, please uh, check the website of your target school. Um, I think in, in a lot of cases uh, you can get away without um, uh, doing TOEFL if you have lived and worked in an English speaking country. So just check the website of the target school and that should really help you. Um, in one of your slides you said pre-evaluation. What does that mean? Oh yeah, yeah, this is the last slide. So basically evaluation there are two kinds. Pre-evaluation there are two, two kinds, right? So there are actually individuals who can evaluate, evaluate your candidacy for a B school before you even begin the process you know, of applying. So they will take a look at your resume or CV, perhaps ask you a few questions and then give you a pre-read on your chances. The second kind is, you know, there are some business schools, MBA schools, 
that are doing evaluation as well, pre-evaluation. You know, it's a, it's a double-edged sword in my mind. Somehow, um, you know, they're letting you know of your chances based on a limited set of information. And if a certain school says that your chances are low, then you're more than likely not to apply to that school. So, you know, think about it carefully, you know. Okay. I don't see any other questions coming through. Let's give five more seconds. Ajay, do you see anything? I think, <clears throat> Manoj, I see one question just coming in yeah. uh, where the aud audience student has, is asking how easy it is to get financial aid uh, for MBA at U.S. colleges. So, so the financial aid is, is um, I would say it's very competitive, right? So, uh, uh, sorry, scholarship is very competitive. You can get financial aid. So, uh, if you if if you are admitted to a school, right? And most cases in most MBA colleges, you know, the application is need blind. So basically, when they're evaluating your process, you know, when your application, they're not looking at your and your financial profile. And if you're admitted, then there are many ways to seek financial aid, right? So, so that's one thing. Right, um, you 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 will be able to finance your MBA. Um, you know, there's a 90% plus chance. Now, if you're looking for a scholarship, right, that is a different thing. That gets very competitive, and um, uh, I, you know, it, it is so competitive. I wouldn't even rely on that. No. I see another question come in here, Manoj. Uh, yeah. Yeah. The student is asking how easy it is to find a job after completing your MBA in US so again you know this is a this is a very subjective question and um, uh, for instance you know the place I work you know we we hire a lot of uh, international students right so there are a couple of things here right it, it all depends on the demand and supply um, so if you are for instance you know if you're doing your MBA in a with a special focus in finance right um, at this point in in um, in in the economy, U.S. economy, you know, there there are a lot of finance jobs. You know, um, if you're looking for consulting and banking, they tend to get a little bit more competitive, um, especially you know if you are from a second tier or third tier schools, you know, because most of these um, companies like you know the banking companies and the consulting companies, they sort of tend to pick candidates you know from the top tier schools. So. Um, so what I'm saying is, you know, it's um, you can get a job. Uh, you know, typically they will, the company will sponsor you on a H1 BB visa. So it is possible. Um, you know, look at the landscape, look at what your your focus of specialization is, and then target the companies accordingly. Target the job opportunities accordingly. More questions today? Let's give a second here. I see someone sending in a question. So this question is around doing MBA uh, in Europe or Asia. And the person is asking if US is the only country where they should look at the MBA programs, or would you say uh, programs such, such as NCIAD as well as universities in Asia, do they offer good good MBA uh, degrees and opportunities? So the simple, so the simple answer, answer to that is yes. You know, NCR and and other places, uh, there are some very good schools in 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 Asia as well. the The fact of the matter is that um, the U.S. has the most number of business schools and the most number of branded well-recognized business schools. So if you're talking about sort of probability, right, I would say you have a higher chance of, you know, getting a admission in a good college in the U.S. than, you know, if you sort of just focus on, for example, INSEAD or London School of Economics or something like that. Yep. So we'll give few more seconds, Manoj, I don't see any more questions. 
but again excellent questions from all the audience members so we'll give uh, 20 30 more seconds and then wrap up if there are no more questions sounds like a plan are there any, are there any, 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 other, any other feedback or, or um, uh, comments from you no you manoj you covered most of the important points my only thought that i want to leave it with our uh, with student audiences as you think about mba just don't think about a degree uh, this is a platform that enables you to be successful uh, in your career so the things that manoj mentioned in terms of why you should do it where to do it is is, is again very important because in my career i've seen number of students who just try to get an mba degree and it does not help them in their future careers, either getting a job post-graduating or even giving them a boost as they move into the uh, professional environment. So that's a very important thing. And lastly, is uh, which, which I would say is uh, from MBA perspective, MBA is going to help you get a job. But after that, with, with your career, it's all about hard work, patience, uh, networking, as well as uh, delivering results. No, I think, no, I think that's, a, that's, that's a great, a great um, addition, addition to, to, the to the webinar. Project. And again, it goes back to the first two points, you know, why an MBA and what colleges, right? Uh, and it's an iterative process as well, because, you know, uh, you know, suppose, you know, you identify four or five colleges, you know, which are your sort of top colleges, but your scores and everything else kind of, um, you know, point to the fact maybe you will, they are targets, uh, they're not, their reach is not targets, then you have to expand that list, you know, right? So that first question, right, why an MBA, uh, kind of doing that soul searching introspection is really, really important. Manoj, I do not see any more questions. So again, thanks for taking time this Sunday morning uh, for this webinar. And I'm going to thank everyone for joining the webinar. Great attendance and number of great questions in this webinar is record recorded, which is going to be on our website, student.com. And you can come share with your friends uh, and ask questions on the site if, if you have anything else. And thanks again. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. It was a pleasure.